Alright guys, welcome back and we're doing unit 10F for our cross-curricular cut and we're talking a little bit about science today looking at the Northern Lights um, the Northern Lights is quite a fantastic event that you can witness but this event that you can all only witness in the Northern regions like your Canada and Siberia so if you ever get a chance to visit that side it will be an awesome opportunity for you guys to visit and see the beautiful stars at night and see the northern lights all right so our topic for today is science and we have some words that we need to go through I want us to start off with number one where you read the title of the text and how are these words related to the picture here we have a beautiful picture and it looks like the universe and our title for this beautiful picture is the northern lights we're looking at polar regions flickering curtains of light night sky solar particles collide gases and glow so these are the words that we need to associate with what we see at the moment over here. So read the title, how are these words related? Well, all the words are related to the Northern Lights. Uh, in a nutshell, what they all look of like, these words where are we can related see them, to the Northern and what causes Lights, them. what they the look like, shows the Northern where Lights. we can see them, and what causes them. The picture shows the Northern Lights, and later on we'll have an interesting video to show us a little bit more about this fantastic phenomenon that happens in the sky in the northern regions like your Canada and your Siberia and maybe a little bit of Russia as well so let's move on to our next slide and then we can see uh, what the story is all about right so we have a little portion on an article that we can go through I ask you guys to listen while I play the audio clip for us. The Northern Lights. Arctic and polar regions are very cold places with long winters. What makes their winter special are the flickering curtains of light that seem to be dancing in the night sky. These are the northern lights, also known as the aurora borealis. The northern lights are caused when solar particles thrown off the surface of the sun collide with the gases in the Earth's atmosphere. The particles travel through space with speeds varying from 186 to 621 miles per second. Even at these speeds, it takes these particles two or three days to reach the Earth. When the particles are stopped by the atmosphere, they collide with the gases. When there are many collisions, you have an aurora. The northern lights can be seen over northern Scandinavia, Canada, Alaska, Siberia, and in parts of the northern USA. The colors of the lights vary depending on the height at which the collision occurs. The most common colors are yellow and green but sometimes red, blue, and violet also glow across the sky. Alright, and that concludes it for the um, short reading passage. Um, for those that just joined, we're still talking about the Northern Lights. So what is this whole passage all about? Um, this whole passage we're talking about the polar regions and the Arctic, which are very cold pl um, places in the winter. And when we refer to Arctic, we talk about the Northern Hemisphere, where we can find the polar bears. Um, and the northern parts. So what makes the winter so special are the flickering curtains of light and flickering 
almost like a flashlight. Um, so we see all of this happening in the northern regions where the sky is very clear. Obviously, the more you move to city areas, you cannot witness this phenomenon because of the amount of pollution that we have. But in your northern hemisphere where you have no pollution or little amounts and traces of pollution and where you have clear skies, you can witness this cool event taking place. Um, and it seems to be dancing in the night sky. So the northern lights, as we know it, is also known as the aurora borealis. And the northern lights are caused where the solar particles from off the surface of the sun collide with the gases. All right. So what happens is um, we have stars outside, and then as they enter the Earth's atmosphere, they collide with the gases. At the moment, you guys are familiar um, with the greenhouse effect and the gases and what's happening in the ozone layer because of pollution. Um, the particles travel through space with speeds varying from 186 to 621 miles. And it's also known that these particles take up to two days to reach the Earth's atmosphere. So, if ever any one of you want to visit or go see this cool phenomenon, you can witness it in northern Scandinavia and Alaska and Canada as well as Siberia. But mostly this happens in the northern parts of the USA. So, if you guys want to travel someday uh, and witness this phenomenon, this is actually a cool thing to look at. Alright, so what can you witness? Some of the common colors that we know, the yellow and green, sometimes a little bit of red and blue and violet. Alright, so these stars, as we can imagine, they glow right across the sky. Alright, and that's just a little bit of background of what's happening in the article, and we can move on to our next slide. Right, read the text and complete the sentences. You guys can pause the video and answer the um, questions and then we can move on just to make it a little bit fun. So the aurora borealis is caused by what? When the solar particles thrown off the surface of the sun collide with the gases in the Earth's atmosphere. So what can you see? You can see it if you are in the northern Scandinavian and the northern USA. All right, it has various colors, as I've just mentioned, yellow and green, um, as well as blue and violet. But the height at which these collision occurs are very um, fantastic for you to witness. So it's something definitely to add on your bucket list. All right, moving on, we need to explain some of the words in bold. Right, some of the words that we need to explain is surface, and I don't need to get too deep into that. When solar particles thrown off the surface of the sun, it collides with the Earth's gases. So when it travels to and hits the Earth's atmosphere, you guys know that the, we are protected by by the ozone layer so when some of these particles enter through the ozone layer all right that's the surface that they are talking about all right true space with varying speeds and the words varying has the same meaning as different all right as you can see and notice from 186 to 621 miles at different speeds okay so they do not travel at a constant speed or at the same speed all right you guys are familiar with speeds um, if i had to explain collision collision is almost like an accident where two things collide on bounds or they come into contact with each other all right um, the colors of the lights vary depending on the height all right, so at different heights, you have different colors. You guys are familiar with heights and weight. And then the colors of the lights vary depending on the height at which the, the uh, collision occurs. And another word for occurs is simply happen. Right, and those are all the words in bold, very easy, that I've just explained to you to make sense of this whole 
passage. Okay, and then moving on, we learn to learning to learn and making notes. Right, so read the text and find information relevant to the headings. Make your notes under each heading. Remember to write full sentences and not just keywords. Please, so guys, only the most important words or phrases. So looking at the first heading, make notes under the headings where you see them. So where can you witness this phenomenon, All right? In which areas or country? Well, it's the Arctic and polar regions, right up north where we have all of the snow and it's so cold and we can see polar bears and Eskimos. So those are your northern Scandinavia, Canada, Alaska and Siberia. Right, so how are they formed? Very interesting question. The solar particles run off the surface of the sun, collide with the gases. All right, that's why you can see the different colors happening and it's quite amazing to notice it. Right, what are some of the common colors that you notice? Yellow and green, as well as blue and violet. All right, so use your notes to talk about the northern lights. And obviously we cannot talk about it in this atmosphere, but it, I would really recommend you, you guys have Zalo, you guys have WhatsApp, you guys have Skype, you can have a conversation with your schoolmates. All right, we'll move on to the video as I have promised you, and then we can just do the questions and answers afterwards. The Northern Lights Arctic and polar regions are very cold places with long winters. What makes their winters special are the flickering curtains of light that seem to be dancing in the night sky. These are the Northern Lights, also known as the Aurora Borealis. The Northern Lights are caused when solar particles thrown off the surface of the Sun collide with the gases in the Earth's atmosphere. The particles travel through space with speeds varying from 300 to 1000 kilometers per second. Even with these speeds, it takes these particles two to three days to reach the Earth. When the particles are stopped by the atmosphere, they collide with the gases. When there are many collisions, you have an aurora. The Northern Lights can be seen over northern Scandinavia, Canada, Alaska, Siberia, and in parts of the northern USA. The colors of the lights vary depending on the height at which the collision occurs. The most common colors are yellow and green, but sometimes red, blue, and violet also glow across the sky. interesting video that we've just noticed and you guys can actually see what I was talking about so let's go through some of the questions right choose the correct answer I would encourage you to do it beforehand and then you can pause the video and answer the questions and then we can go through it together all right another name for the northern lights is and we have a list of options of which only option a the Aurora Borealis is the correct answer Right, moving to number two, the northern lights are caused when we have three options of which only one answer is the correct. So B, solar particles collides with gases. That's when we witness the northern lights in action. All right, you can see an aurora where, right, in the northern regions, not all over the USA and mostly in Scandinavia. Remember what I talked about when I said that um, we can notice all of these fantastic lights and phenomena because there's no pollution and nothing blocking us and our view. Alright, so number four, the northern lights can be different colors depending on what? Depending on the height at which the collision happens. So at different heights you'll experience different colors. And then lastly, the most common colors are, and we have a range of options, 
of which only yellow and green are the most common colors that we can notice. Alright, and that concludes it for this section as we move on. Alright, talking about phrasal verbs and we look at the first example in the parenthesis which is throw. So what is a phrasal verb? Now the phrasal verb is compounded of two words. It's either a verb and a pronoun that we use together to make up a word and then that is known as our phrasal verbs. So if you guys didn't know, choose the correct particle and check in the word list. So for example, the sun throws off or away lots of particles from its surface. So the correct answer that we have here as we use our phrasal verb is the sun throws off all right, lots of particles from its surface. All right, don't throw old magazines, recycle them. Do we say don't throw up or don't throw away? That is our second phrasal verb is don't throw away. Right, he was thrown out or off of the college for his rude behavior. Using the phrasal verb, we have thrown, and we say that he was thrown out of college for his rude behavior. And then the last one, I'm not feeling well, I think I'm going to throw, and the correct word for that is up. Right, and for those of you who've got all of it correctly, good job, as we move on to the next slide. And we've reached the end, a little bit of a project for you guys to do, uh, gather more information about the Northern Lights and present it. Obviously, you guys cannot present it in a class environment, but what I would encourage you to do is you guys can have a conversation with your friends. Let's see what you can gather up from the Northern Lights as we go to the workbook. Okay, so let's resume in your workbook, Unit 10F. Here we see the beautiful city of Bath in the southwest of England, of which we will get to a little bit later. But as we focus on Unit 10F, we start with reading. Alright, and then before we can answer the Q&A, we need to read through the passage a little bit. And I'll give you guys a chance to read through the passage while we go through the true and false questions. Alright, so look at the sentences below the city of Bath. Read the text to decide if each sentence is true or false. Right, so if we start off with number one, many visitors to Bath come from different countries. By now you guys should have read the passage and we're going to answer the questions and that is true. Many visitors uh, to Bath come from different countries. It's a beautiful country in England and many uh, of us wants to see this wonder and beautiful city. Right, the hot springs were discovered by the Romans. Is that true or false? And we can see that that answer is false. People did not look after the Bath properly after the Romans left Britain. And we see that that is true because it was uh, abandoned a little bit. For many years, not many people came to bathe. Is that true? And we can see, yes, that is true. Right, the local stone helps make the buildings in bathe look very uh, attractive. And that is true as well because of the beautiful landscape and uh, because of the beautiful architecture around these stones. Right, everybody who wants to come to bathe wants to look at the buildings and that's not true because everyone who wants to come to bathe do not want to look at the buildings but go to the hot springs and look at the inner side of the city of bathe. Right, visitors to bathe can take part in a number of sports and that is true as well. Bath restaurants now offer better food than they used to. Right, and we can see that that is false. 
All right, and number nine, all restaurants in Bath are very expensive, and that's false. It's quite reasonably priced for everyone to enjoy all of the local cuisine. Right, and visitors to Bath should book their accommodation in advance. Well, that's true because visitors to Bath, um, because it's a very busy city and everybody wants to see it, so you need to book in advance. Right, replace the underlined phrases using the phrasal verbs in the list. Throw off, throw away, throw out and throw up. Right, and we need to replace this with the sentences or words made him leave, get rid of, be sick, and produce and release. For, for number one, we can say that the principal threw him out of the school. All right, so for number one, threw him out of. Number two, make sure you throw away the garbage when you finish eating remember we are still using the phrasal verb to replace the underlined words all right i think the milk has spoiled i feel like i'm going to throw up is the correct word that we can put in here and the correct phrasal verb as well and then lastly factories produce and release a lot of heat and we can say factories throw off a lot of heat which is not good for the environment by the way and it has an effect on the ozone layer and not good for the ozone layer at the moment all right so that concludes it and then we will go on to the dictation of which i will play for you then you can listen and then afterwards i will give you the answers but I would strongly advise you to do it first and fill in the answers and then you can have a look at the answers right at the end. So I'll play the dictation for you right now. Unit 10F. Exercise 3, page 77. Dictation. People these days are tired of visiting tourist hotspots and endless souvenir shopping. They want to go on vacations with a purpose. As a result, they are choosing alternative ecotourism options. Listen and write. People these days... ...are tired of visiting... Tourist hotspots and endless souvenir shopping. They want to go. on vacations with a purpose. As a result, They are choosing alternative ecotourism options. Listen and check. People these days are tired of visiting tourist hotspots and endless souvenir shopping. They want to go on vacations with a purpose. As a result, they are choosing alternative ecotourism options. 
All right, and that's the end of the dictation. And now I will reveal the answers to you guys. So you. All right, and next I will put on the audio script for you guys so that you can check against the work that you've just written down.